Hey, hello there, and as usual, I'm Aaron from Last Stand Gamers, and welcome. So today we're taking a look at a ship from the 40k universe. Now this is the Divine Right. It is an amazingly detailed ship. It is giant in size. I'll spawn my character next to it. You can see it just disappears against the scale of this thing. And I've played 40k. I've played 40k in the past. I was a bit more of a painter than a player. I collected Imperial Guards and then went over to Chaos. So this ship is right up my alley, really. So let's take a look at it. So starting at the front, we'll work our way to the back and then we'll go inside. So at the front here, you've got this giant ramming blade with various different communication, disintegration devices, no, mainly communication devices out here on the front. You'll notice that this is a giant ramming blade. In the world of 40k, I guess ramming is more honourable than you might think. You've of course got this eagle's head up here at the top. And taking a look inside, you're probably wondering, is this thick? No, this is a hollow type head. I guess you could reinforce it with blast door armor if you wanted to in the rear, but it's going to do the job. That spaced area, that initial ram will puncture a nice hole in the enemy ship and your ship should be pretty well protected. So going up to the top, we've got, of course, the top deck guns. Now these are one, two, three, four, five. You can see there a single battery turret. So the turret itself uses a special weapons type of mod. You've got two areas up at the top there for detailing and you've got this gold band along the side. But don't worry, we've, we've missed quite a little bit here at the front. So we'll work away to our first of many cathedral style windows. Now you'll notice as we go through this ship, there is kind of a church like element to it or a monastery you could say, but there is plenty of detailing just like this. You can see this divine right. You've got this like almost draping eagle type wings. There is detailing like this all over the place. Something you don't see in a lot of space engineer ships. Lots of logos, mini logos and statues aboard a craft. And I think that's what makes this one quite special. So after we've had a look at all the communication devices along the front here, let's work our way down into this area. So here we have one of the main batteries. So these are giant cannons that will produce a, oh, an amazing shell. So I'm just going to dip in and out the design on this one because I want to show you what's behind the walls here. So tucked in here is the loading mechanism for this cannon. So you can see that this retracts up. Of course, it doesn't actually do it. This is just more of a mock-up. The shell is then punched into the gun and then it is fired. You can see these racks coming down from the ceiling from the various batteries here. Look at that. Four cannons. They've got like a breech loading mechanism. Oh, it's so gorgeous. It looks so cool. So you can see the cannon on the outside. It's got a little bit of air vents or connectors connecting up to the side to charge the shell i'm guessing you've got some iron thrusters and then you've got some more detail and ribbing as well as more communication devices down here now the ribbing on this ship really pops from a distance and you can see it how it's creating that shadow and contrast and it stops it from looking completely square because this is quite a boxy ship They've also broken up some of the shape using the good old pillar blocks and a few of these smaller like cathedral windows. So as we work our way further down the ship, we've got, of course, more cannon batteries. But we've also got these giant double stacked hangars. So this is a total of six and then another four bays. Well, not four, sorry, eight bays over in that. No, hang on. I'm, I'm off. I'm miscounting, Aaron. What's going on? So you've got eight bays here, eight bays there. And of course, you've got the exact same on the other side. And just have a look at the scale of this. You could fit a quite a large ship coming out of this, and it is rear protected. So if someone does come up the flank, they're not going to be able to shoot straight into their hangar. And if they are hitting from the front there, they shouldn't be able to weave shots directly in the side. So it is quite a cool design. You've also got the airlocks here to protect you. Now, quickly dipping inside once again, you can see we've got these large hangar bays. We've, of course, got four main ones. And then at the back there, we've got another four for storage of ships. And that just connects in to the hangar on either side. So you can maneuver, maneuver ships and do what you wish in this area. Now, coming underneath, we've got another sort of communications-like array down here in the bottom. A quick dip inside. You can see that this particular area is hollow. So there is areas that you could add your own details to if you wanted to. And then we've got these outrigging areas. We've got another one of the large cannons there on the side. You can see some of the detailing in this little outrigger there and it wraps around the back to more of the cool and modded cannons and it tucks in there with a little bit more ribbon now the engines that you're seeing in here i believe are the helicarrier engines 
They are very, very powerful. They do the job well, but these little gold tints are lovely. So that's the main central area. Something that I forgot to show you, though. Let's have a look around these cathedral windows. We've got these draped sort of priest-like characters with swords on either sides. So we've got one sword there and one shield there. And these continue throughout the whole of the ship. So when we dip in and out of the design, you can see that this area is just full of them. It's it kind of has a really cool presence. You don't see things like this on many ships in Space Engineers. So it's a really cool detail. So let's head up into the command area, the bridge of the ship, the heart. There is many thrones inside as well, but we'll have a look here. So we've got the main command deck that's nicely tucked behind this turret for a bit of protection. And we've got an observation deck up there. Above that, we've got this giant angel-like character with a sword and halo above him. Whoa, just so much presence. You can see at the distance as well. It just looks awesome. It's like he's going to pull out that sword and just cut your ship in half. Coming around here, we've got more detailing, more symbols, more statues. And the use of interior blocks here. Not super good for strength, but this is probably one of them ships that's more likely going to be used in a functionality type role. Now, moving over to the engine bay around the back here, you can see we've got four thrusters wrapped in red and gold. Very nice. Iron Man would approve. And you can see we've got more of these little logos down here on the side. And the thing is with these is I believe these are mounted on rotors. And this one over here triggered my OCD a little bit where um, <laughs> when I first looked at it, because it's wonky, I just want to grab that, just twist it a little bit to the left and straighten it up. But let's um, continue moving around the back. So at the back, like I said, we've got them large thrusters, and you can see we've got a bit of detailing going on here with these golden highlights. Very, very cool indeed. I really like the look of that engine, mate. It's simple, straight to the point, with a bit of projection on the side. Of course, there's a few standard turrets in this area as well. So we've had a look at some of the interior, but we're going to actually just plunge deep into the ship and have a look at the navigation um, and operation sort of station. So as we enter through this rear door here, this big plane of glass, we enter this chamber with almost like a chandelier structure at the top, another emblem up there. And this is, of course, the navigator's chair. We've got two beacons on either side and we've got a blast door here to keep the navigator safe. Now, over in this area, we've got another throne. This is the captain's chair, and he's got a full readout of the divine in here with various different weapon systems. Very, very cool looking. Wrapping around to the side, we enter into the bridge-like area, and you can see at the back of the turret there, they're even labeled with a little number, so you know which one you can control, and it's, it's quite useful, that, in a more functionality sense. So as we work our way up, and down into the hull of the ship. Let's just phase through. I'll actually show you inside one of these cannons first. We'll show you how simple they actually are. So you can see we've got the main barrel there, and inside here we've got a remote control block, a gyroscope, and through here is a rotor. So really simple, super functional turret design that you can do. So as we cut down, into the hull of the ship, we enter into one of the cargo type storage areas here, with the cargo containers held up on these cool rocket light platforms. And this leads us through the whole of the ship like this. So there's a lot of cargo storage capacity in here. That brings us right to the end and we enter into the empty hollow. That is the ram-like chamber. Now coming down here into the front of the ship, you can see it's got this red light floor and like another cathedral-like room. And it leads us through. This ship just seems to keep going when you use this main entrance way through here. So we've checked out a lot of the interior so far, but there's still a few rooms that I want to show you. So we're going to head back to the rear of the ship here. We're going to drop down this giant shaft, and behind here there is a blast door. Inside here, this is where the heart of the beast is. A giant engine room, what seems to be a mixture of both reactors, jump drives, and you can just kind of see the layout here. There is access for repair and catwalks, and it just leads up into this... Oh, cool engine bay area here where there's a number of batteries as well the only issue i found was this ship didn't come stocked with any uranium so the lights didn't come up i had to actually stick a reactor on the side to get this thing firing up and it looks like the jump drives are fully charged very cool indeed really nice sort of ship but i don't think i'm going to be able to fly it because it just doesn't have enough power on board at the moment so we'll head to the bridge and i'll give it a quick go so we'll pop out we'll head up here and i'll try to move it so let's just make sure all systems are online. Okay, there we go. Yeah, we can get this moving. 
All right, lovely. So gyroscopic movement. I know the gyroscopes are currently set to the 1000% mod one, but I'm getting little to no gyroscopic movement. That could be because maybe it's stationary, you silly billy. So now we have a ship. Yep, we're getting gyroscopic movement. We're getting thrust. We're getting sort of a standard type movement for a ship of this size. It's great not to see any of the statues or monuments clanging out. Very, very cool indeed. We can also access the turrets. So we've got a standard heavy sort of movement. Slow deacceleration as well. So you're going to have to plan how you're driving with this ship. But let's access one of these turrets. So the turret we've actually accessed here at the minute is the front one. You can see it moving around there. We've got a camera. We've also got the weapons. Weapons not firing, not loaded. So I'm guessing that the ammunition needs to be placed within these weapons to get them loading. But we can quickly access all these guns on the deck here. And they could be very useful if fired correctly. And it looks like the radius has been set up correct as well. So that they can't smash into your own ship. And Oh, oh sorry, maybe I spoke too soon <laughs> as that barrel hits there. Yeah, so they've been worked out well. Except these little red marks. You've got to be careful with them. Um, so there isn't a massive area where you can aim down here. So you'd have to engage targets either slightly up or slightly to the side. But I'm guessing that's what the main battery is over there. And you'd have a whole fleet to help you. But still, we're still slowing down. So it does take a while to do that. Anyway, I'd like to you guys to check out this ship in the description below. And let me know if you've played 40k. And if so, which armor did you collect? Anyway, next time, I'll see you then.